ज्ञानदीप अकेडमी इंडिया टॉप कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज प्रिपरेशन Join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses. To join the batch, download Nandi Pais Academy app from Google Play Store. For more information, contact nine five double one two eight zero four six five. Hello, everybody. Welcome you all. My name is Satyajit, and I am here to discuss this year's prelims question 2022. Right? Especially, we are going to cover with the current affairs in this session. And as you know, upon throughout the year, uh, we have followed with the current affairs uh, on monthly basis. And I am very happy to say that out of these 10 to 12 corely current affairs questions in this year's prelims, one question was directly from our program. Okay. Let's start with the first question. Uh, of course, uh, there are some uh, uh, like you can say collapse or you can say uh, the overlapping of the many questions of the current affairs with the many other topics like environment, economy, or uh, you can say geography and all. So these questions, which are uh, let's say overlapping with history, the current affairs with history, current affairs with environment, current affairs with economy and all. All these questions are going to be covered in the separate separate topics. Uh, let's say, for example, a faculty of the economics will cover those uh, current affairs also. But I am here to co cover the core current affairs questions in the paper, right? So there are around twelve to thirteen questions. Uh, the first question starts with in this slide is uh, regarding. <coughs> uh, okay, so come to the question number sixty-six. By the way, this was about and you. Uh, As you have thought with this question paper, you know that many of the questions were asked from the IR. Uh, many questions were from the uh, let's say international bodies like UN and all. And these bodies we are going to cover in the current affairs, right? First of all, the question number sixty-six AIIB, that is Indian uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. There are three institutions given, and uh, they have asked which or uh, India is member of which of the above, right? So you know that AIIB, MTCR, and SCO, all these three institutions, we are member with, right? So just a second. <clears throat> so that's how we can say that AIIB, MTCR, SCO, all these institutions we have membership with. Therefore, the answer was D, one, two, and three. Question number sixty-seven is regarding the Vietnam. So it might look as a question with. the economics or sometimes in geography also that is economic geography but let's say we'll cover in current affairs also vietnam has been one of the fastest growing economies they have given with the uh, they have given five statements and out of those we are uh, asked to find out the correct statements right the vietnam has been an all so uh, instead of reading all these data i would like to say that the question number 67 the option number second was a wrong option in his uh, question that was the vietnam is led by the the you can say multi party political system uh, if you are you can say uh, uh, aware with the political system in vietnam it is single party system it is uh, led by the socialist or the communist party of vietnam therefore the second was wrong and therefore if you can eliminate the other options with the second so you can reach to b and c Out of that, Vietnam has been the most productive e-service sector in the Indo-Pacific region. This statement was also wrong. Therefore, the answer. Just a second. Yeah, the answer is one, three, and four. Therefore, C was uh, is to be. Uh, by the way, uh, there might be some discrepancies in our discussion, and uh, uh, there are still many questions which are still doubtful. Uh, what answers can be right? So therefore, don't worry about it. We will come with the another revised answer key in uh, a few days. Uh, but we are here to let's say we have taken efforts to minimize the errors in our discussion. Okay. So let's move to the question number. I think that next was seventy six. Yeah. With reference to United Nations Presidential Committee, uh, uh, consider the following statement. So this was. Again, one important institution, UN, and they have asked the question in from the United Nations. The first option was it is a committee set up by UN Security Council and uh, works under its supervision. Second was it is traditionally meets in let's say the month of March, June, and September. So they have actually tracked you. 
with this statement. The third is it assesses the credentials of UN members before submitting a report to the UNGA. So this is right, correct, uh, the correct answer. By the way, uh, it is the main function of the United Nations uh, Credentials Committee. But one important fact is that it is set up by UNSC. This is the wrong statement. It is not set up by the UNSC, but by the United Nations General Assembly. Okay, so on yearly basis and it meets on yearly basis also that is likely to be in the September and all uh, every year. Therefore, it does not meet in March, June and September. This is wrong. First is wrong. Therefore, your answer should be A. Right. Now, the next question is uh, question number 77, right? <coughs> Which one of the following statements best describe the polar code? You, yeah, you can say that it can be a geography plus current affairs question, but the polar code, it was in the news in last couple of years and the most surprising thing about UPSC, yeah, we can say that it is not surprising actually, but in this year's current affairs questions, they have followed the current affairs, let's say for the last one and a half to two years. So uh, this is not uh, an easy game to follow only current affairs for the one year. But you have to go beyond that, right? So this question was the about polar code, which was covered, uh, which has been covering, uh, been covering from let's say a couple of years back, right? So polar code, uh, in that they have given the statement. So you should be aware about what is a polar code. Uh, by the way, its answer is A. As you know, the climate change is uh, showing its face, and the snow is melting, especially from the Arctic. And as the snow is melting, the uh, there are you can say we are we are finding with the new sea routes, right? Because uh, the 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 as the snow melts, it opens up the new navigational lines, new sea lines. Okay, therefore, uh, many countries are finding it economical at the same time profitable to explore through these new routes to reach to the new trading areas. But as we are moving towards the core of the Arctic, the center of the Arctic or the North Pole, the ships or the movements of the ships and the the corvos is increasing in those areas that is again threatening the very fragility of the Arctic ecosystem. Therefore, the countries, uh, they have jo joined their hands together to form a, a code that will regulate the movement of the ships. So, main intention of the polar code is to regulate the movement of the ships around the Arctic or the North Pole or the core of the Arctic ecosystem. So, this option is it is the uh, international code for the safety for the ships operating in the polar waters right so a now question number 78 with reference to un again we are finding that they have they are they are asking again and again about the inter important you can say international institutions and now uh, the un has been asked for the second times uh, United Nations General Assembly considers the following statements. UNGA can grant observer status to the non member, then you can say the intergovernmental organizations can seek the observer status in UN, then permanent observers in the UNGA can maintain missions. Yes, of course, all these three statements were right. And if you can observe or you can refer to the, the optional websites of the United Nations and the other institutions like this, you will find these statements directly picked from there, right? So the option D is correct in regards to question number 70. Seven, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> now let's move to question number seventy-eight. Right. So now the question number is eighty-two. Yeah. BDBD is a large refugee settlement in northwest Kenya, and uh, the again one important you can say interest area of UPSC regarding prelims is the disputed regions, right? So which are the disputed regions and uh, their geographical locations. So it can be in, uh, you can say, uh, a geographic current affairs, but we, it was uh, in use for several times. So let's cover it in the current affairs also. BDBD is a large refugee settlement in the northwestern Kenya, right? Secondly, some people fled from South Sudan to civil war BDBD. So uh, if you are following the news for the last couple of years, you will uh, yeah, you might be aware about the word BDBD, right? It is a refugee settlement in South Sudan. By the way, in this question, they have covered uh, two disputes. Uh, one dispute between South Sudan and Sudan and another is uh, between, of course, uh, Somalia and Kenya, right? So, in single question, they have covered two disputes. So, this is again one complexity or the, uh, the dynamics of the UPS regarding prelims questions, the framing of the UPS prelims questions. So, BDBD is a large refugee settlement in uh, the northwestern Kenya. This settlement is wrong. It is actually in the South Sudan. Okay. 
therefore wrong okay some people who fled from south sudan civil war live in bidi because this is okay okay so as you know there is uh, or there was civil war going on a couple of years back in sudan and south sudan and uh, the bidi bidi was one of the important and the most large uh, you can say largest uh, refugee settlement in south sudan okay so second settlement is right and some people fled from civil war in somalia live in daba right so dada uh, refugee complex in kenya so again some people who fled from the civil war in somalia live in daba refugee yes of course so this daba refugee complex is in kenya and uh, if you are stuck with some you can say factual clarity or if you are not recalling your knowledge then you can observe here these two statements are again in contrast so bidi bidi in kenya and they have again given a daba complex in kenya so one of them should be wrong, wrong right so therefore by elimination also you can eliminate this one and two and uh, two and three is right regarding this question okay 82 now what about uh, 83 Consider the following countries. Uh, one important institution uh, has been asked again. Uh, you can observe here in current affairs they are focusing more on the institutions, uh, uh, especially from the IR. Okay. So consider the following statements. This is question number eighty-three. They have asked with the institution called as the organization of the Turkic state. By the way, what is organization of Turkic state? It is a, a institution, organization which uh, has the members from the uh, member countries who have who have you can say Turkish language as their origin, right? So therefore, uh, uh, by logic, you can say that Armenia. If you are thorough with Armenia's economic, political, demographic system, you will get to know that Armenia is dominant in terms of Christianity, right? So Azerbaijan, Croatia, Romania, Uzbekistan. out of this you have to find out which of the four the questions or which of which countries were actually the members of the turkic state out of this armenia and croatia are not the members of the turkic state by the way the list is like that azerbaijan kazakh kyrgyz turkey and uzbek i will repeat again azerbaijan kazakhstan kyrgyzstan Turkey and uh, Uzbek are the official members of the organization of Turkic state, which uh, serves the interest of the those countries who has Turkic language, right? So in this question, uh, if by elimination one and three is wrong, so yeah, one three, one three, right? Three. So two and five uh, is the uh, the C. By elimination also you can go for it. Eighty three. Now the answer is right. So C, two and five. Now question number eighty <coughs> four. Question number eighty four was regarding, yeah, one important current affair by the way regarding solar. It can be go, you uh, can say, it can be listed as a geography or let's say another, but uh, in, it was in news. So uh, Gujarat has the largest solar power in India. Uh, then Kerala fully solar powered international airport, and then Goa has the largest floating solar voltaic cell. So out of these, first of all, largest solar park. Is not in Gujarat, but it is in Rajasthan, Bhadla, Jodhpur district, right? So Rajasthan should be the uh, right statement. Therefore, Kerala has a fully solar power industry airport. So if you are following the news, you can uh, uh, you can say easily recall that Kochi was that airport which was uh, which is now a fully solar power. So this is Kochi, man. Huh? So okay, Goa has the largest floating solar voltaic uh, photo project in India. Not Goa; it is Andhra Pradesh. Okay. So by this logic uh, or your factual knowledge, uh, only two is correct regarding eighty-four, right? So both these statements one and three are wrong. What about eighty-five? <clears throat> With reference to UNGA, by the way, no, uh, UN clause, right? United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea considers the following statements. UN clause has been in the news for let's say this whole decade, of course, because of the expansionist policies of the many countries like China. Uh, they are expanding their military bases. They are expanding their economic uh, uh, bases uh, throughout the world, especially in South China Sea and all right, or the Atlantic and all right. So therefore, South China Sea uh, dispute once again uh, uh, back, uh, once again you can say brought back. This UN clause into line by UN clause is actually one convention by United Nations which regulates the economic and the other activities in the open seas. 
So uh, if you can refer this all the statements and the website of United Nations uh, UN clause, you can say that this all the statements are correct and uh, uh, this UN clause uh, has the answer as you can say one, two, and three. By the way, you should be very uh, thorough about what is exclusive economic zone, what is the nautical miles, and uh, how we calculate that and why that is under dispute and all right so what is the role of china in south china sea and how they are invading the un clause so um, um, many you can say justice systems have given the judgments against the chinese expansionism but china is not ever you can say uh, nowhere to stop its activities so uh, we are not here to of course discuss the theory of un clause what is un clause and all uh, but the answer is yeah one two and three <clears throat> this was about 85. Now let's talk about again with reference to that. Uh, we just discussed about China and South China Sea disputes, and in that context, uh, this question can be asked. So, Senkaku Islands, uh, where is the location by the way? This can be a geography, but of course, so it was in uh, recent news. This can be a current affairs question. The Senkaku Islands sometimes mentioned in the news uh, is it a dispute or is it an artificial island or a permanent American base or what? If you can refer to the disputes or the geographical disputed territories in the Pacific Ocean, you can, uh, of course, uh, come across the names like Senkaku or Kuril or uh, the Parasal Islands and all, right? So, um, first of all, what is the Kuril Island? The Kuril Island is the northern territory of Japan, where it is under dispute between Russia and, Ch Russia and Japan. And Senkaku is disputed territory or the islands between the Japan and China, right? Likewise, in Parasal and all, this is this is this comes under the South China Sea dispute. Therefore, its answer can be Japan. Yes, answer is Japan and China engaged in the maritime dispute over their islands in the East China Sea, right? So therefore, Senkaku has the answer as B. Okay. Now, what about the next question? So uh, yeah, China and Japan. Okay. Consider the following pairs. Again, uh, one interesting type of question has been introduced here by UPSC in this year's prelims. Uh, actually, you can observe here, they have given with the countries and why they, these countries were in the news. They have, which is very, uh, we can say, uh, not a typical question by the way, of the current affairs. Okay. So, on the one hand, we have the list of the countries and the other, uh, on the other hand, we have important reasons for being in the news recently. Chad, Guinea, you know, uh, Lebanon, Tunisia. And out of this, uh, uh, the reasons were the setting of the military, permanent military base by China, the suspension of constitution and the government by the military, severe and prolonged economic depression, and suspension of the parliament by the president. So out of these, uh, Tunisia, uh, if you are following the news for at least a year, you can, of course, observe here the Tunisia is right answer here. So suspension of military by the president, uh, sorry, suspension of parliament by the president was happened, yeah, of course, occurred in Tunisia. Lebanon, yes, it has been under the economic depression for a uh, uh, long period. Uh, Guinea, suspension of the constitution by the uh, government, this is also okay. But Chad is not the permanent military base by China. China has many military bases, but Chad is not among, uh, among them. Recently, it was this, this topic, this topic of setting up the military, permanent military base by China was in news regarding equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea, okay. So they are planning. Uh, uh, it was in the news because the American intelligence uh, find out that uh, you can say uh, it is going. China is going to be China is going to establish a military base in uh, one of the African states that is Equatorial Guinea. So, but not uh, yeah, of course uh, uh, the chart, right? So here we have only three pairs. C, okay. So this was about question number eighty-seven, and I hope uh, you are good with this. These were the uh, the current affairs question in this year's prelims. The you can say, of course, of some collaborations or some overlapping might happen with the other topics, but uh, it can be related to current affairs. Okay, so I hope uh, you are good with this year's prelims. Uh, don't worry. Uh, thank you very much for this session, and uh, uh, let's prepare for the mains, irrespective of your score in the prelims, uh, because it is going to help you a lot in the if you are clearing this. Prelims and find if you are not clearing this year's prelims, so it is going to help you in the next year's main. So, uh, without uh, losing your moment on the preparation, please uh, start with your preparation like you are entering for this year's main. Okay, so till then, and thank you very much. Uh, we will meet soon with another session. Thank you. Nandip Academy, India's top coaching institution 
for civil services preparation. Join us online to get most enriching experience from best faculty with excellent notes and specially designed courses. To join the batch, download Nandi Pius Academy app from Google Play Store. For more information, contact 9511-280-465.